Hello, my name is Doug Hubble and welcome to Astrophotography Tutorials. Today I have a special guest, Sean Maloney from Red Stick Astro. He's gonna give us some telescope cable management techniques. Thanks, Doug. Hey, listen, uh, you wanna learn how to do this with your telescope and get it down to just two wires? Now you can see that I've taken everything down off of what I had and Basically what I wanted to show you is the spaces that you've got in between your scope and your mounting plates. I used Velcro to hook everything up and I'll show you that in a second. But these spaces that you have, that's where you're going to hide all of your wires. I had some old spare uh, dovetail bars laying around my house. And what I did was I bought some uh, industrial strength Velcro. And I took the Velcro and mounted it directly to the bars. And like I said, I put the Velcro on the rings. And then I put the Velcro on the back of all of the devices that I want to connect. So basically, I can take a device, put it on the uh, dovetail bar, and then I can take that dovetail bar and I can put it on side of the scope. And it stays up there nice and tight. You have to work it in a little bit, but it'll, it'll grab good. And that way, you can pull it off. You can pretty much use whatever you want. I just use this because that's what I had laying around the house. You got to look at what you're going to do to put your data together. And what I used was a USB 3 powered hub. Uh, I chose a powered hub because I want to make sure that all my transfer rates for data are, uh, they have all of the ability to transfer at the rates that they want. When you start stacking up a lot, on a passive hub, you could get some corruption. Hub, you want to use USB 3 because that's where everything's going. It'll talk to your USB 2 devices, and uh, that way you still get all those fast transfer rates and it works with your old stuff. You want to buy yourself a label maker, and you want to label all of your wires on both sides, okay? And you want to label your hub where those wires are going to connect and the reason being is that Windows learns that device when you plug it in so every time you go and plug it into a new port Windows has to relearn that port and sooner or later Windows gets so confused that what will start happening is your your devices will drop out and they won't work so if you use a label maker and decide where they're going to go the first time out, then they're plugged in there every single time. If you take it apart, you know you're going to plug it in right back in the same. Get some shorter cables. A lot of our stuff comes with some pretty long cables. And remember, you got to hide that stuff up there somewhere. So the shorter, the better. Go buy you some decent cables. Figure out which ones you need. And, you know, that's the length of this entire run for data on my uh, uh, scope. So I got rid of all those 8, 9, 10-foot cables. DC is very unforgiving because it is polarity conscience. That means it wants to run on the correct wires. You can't reverse your positive and negative like you can on an AC circuit. If you put them opposite, you're going to blow up whatever it is you're connecting to. So you want to, the easiest way to figure it out is, you know, a lot of our stuff comes with these cigarette adapters and the side pieces are your negative wire and the center pin is going to be your hot side that's going to be your, your positive side so go get you a meter you know it doesn't have to be a the extravagant one just get an inexpensive meter and set it to tone so that when you touch it to the uh, thing it, it tones for you and what you want to do is take a wire say this is a camera wire because you're going to make these up one at a time all right this is the camera wire i cut off and I need to know which wire is positive. So you take your, your lead to your, your meter, you put it on one leg of the wire, set it to tone, and then go touch the negative, and then touch the positive. And the one that gives you the tone tells you that that's the wire that you're connected to on the other end. And if it turns out that the one you got in your hand tones when you touch the tip, that's your hot wire. And so what you want to do is look at your wire, and most of the time they have writing on one portion and maybe nothing or grooves or something on the other side. You want to mark your positive wire. And now you know that on this one it's the writing. So I know that when I make up my connection back there on the, on the camera, that the one with the writing needs to connect to the positive clip, and the other wire needs to go to the negative. And that way you ensure that your polarity is correct. But now we need to talk about amps. This is a uh, power pole made by Rig Runner, and you can buy them on the web. And it has, they come in various sizes. I chose this one uh, because it fit everything that I needed. Uh, this one has three outputs, one input, that's where you feed your power into it, okay? What you need to do is you need to go pull the paperwork or look up on the web 
for all of the devices that you're going to connect to this thing and find out what their amp draw is. Most cameras draw two to three amps. Uh, my focuser for Moonlight draws a half an amp. You need to know all of that and you need to write all those numbers down and add them together. That's going to give you your total amp draw for the power pole. But you also need to know them individually. Assign what you're going to connect to that output and that's all that's ever going to be connected to that output and then you want to put the proper fuse for that device. So the dew heater got a 10 amp fuse because it draws 8. The ATIC camera and the ZWO camera they draw 2 so it got a 3 to 5 amp fuse in it. But this guy I paid about $125 from the same people PowerWorks that I bought the rig runner from. Uh, I don't use batteries. I'm lucky enough to have AC power out there. So this is plugs into the wall. It's a 12 volt power supply. It's a 40 amp power supply. Not that we'll ever need that. But you got two outputs on it. You got a you could actually set up two different camera rigs on here if you wanted to, or two complete scope rigs. And then you got a big set on the back. So you got three ways to send power out of this thing. And it's it's really robust. I talked to the guys down there. They said it's made to get beat on and brought around, and so it's really good. Um, if you don't have access to AC power outside and you can't use something like this, what you could do is you could take an old cable left over, like I did from my, one of my dew heaters, and just make up the connections on the other end. And then you could just plug it directly into your, your output or your input for your uh, power pole and then run it directly to your battery. And then your battery will power up the power pole. So, but when you're finished and you apply power to this device, you want to take your meter again and you want to check each one and make sure that they're 12 volts DC. That's it. Put it all together and power it up. And when you're done, you should have two things, a wire going to your computer and a wire going to your power supply. There you have it. I got it all back together. Look. And it, uh, it all works. It's all balanced. It's, it's ready to go out and image again. And again, I got a power wire and a computer wire. So I hope uh, I hope this helps you out. Be sure to check out Sean's website, redstickastro.com. And if you have an astrophotography tip or trick you would like to share, please contact me at dhubble at gmail.com. I really appreciate when you contribute and show me your little tips and tricks as well. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon.